the should look straightforward at you. They're dark, medium size to be frontally placed, not large or full or small and some. We have a really big problem with the breed, it's coming to breed more and more now, is the white showing around, um, around the eyes. And this is why it's important to actually lift the hair away and actually look at the eyes because um, with, with the party colours, the people breed party colour to party colour, there we get the knurling in the eye, which is a disqualification in my eyes, because that should never happen. So we do often, scarily enough, do see that a lot. <laughs> I didn't think so, because I didn't think that uh, standards differed at all. I tried to do a very simple. Uh, or an almond. Um, almond. 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 Petally feathered and a dark tip of an asset. Well, you know, um, I would never bother too much if we didn't have dark tip. But strangely enough, most of them have a little bit of uh, darker tips to them anyway. Let them not be too Okay, I'm thinking this is the issue that I, with, with the large <coughs> the standard actually calls for a reverse spine. Um, and its size should be nearly in a straight line and full position is desirable. When I came into this breed, um, males, I believe, were never really considered. It looked like somebody had picked up a handful of rice and just chucked it in there. Um, I think the males have improved 100%. It's the, width of, it's the width across here that I love to see, which actually is the strength of the full face. Um, when it comes to reverse system, I'm I'm a little bit more lenient with that because you get a much more arrogant expression if you've got a little bit more undershot, uh, and I would certainly forgive more undershot provided they don't never show teeth. But there's certainly a little bit more turn up the chin. With a, with, a, with a reverse system bite, you do not get that turn up the chin. So you need a balanced head, a straight forefinger, <coughs> narrow skull, and darkness of eye. Well, what is that for nowadays? Eh? When the dog is soft behind the wither or um, runs uphill, it's usually connected to full water in the case of tippy backs, and, um, and usually uh, very straight hind quarters will be doing the fine. So they're well balanced and compact. Now they're not, they're lean, so they're not, you don't expect the same sort of amount of root cage on a larger episode than you would on a, a sheet saw. And you don't want the amount of boning on a larger episode if you have a sheet saw. Michael, this is the next photo. This is very, very high up, but very, you know, very, very flexed. There's no, which, this dog? It might just be the way I cut the picture in. Because <laughs> I haven't got another picture I'll show you later on. Um, yeah, because he's sitting on the table. It's just, it's also the angle of when I was trying to cut the pictures in with that stretching of the page. But if anything, uh, my criticism, and this is a dog that I just want best to trust in the world, my criticism of him is probably a fraction of one. It was not the best. I like the balance of this. So the hind quarters are well developed with good muscle, good angulation, heavily burnished. The hops from the view from behind should be parallel and never too close. For me, it's important that you know a larger episode, if somebody has a lot of skirt on the larger episode, 
you should be able to pick the skirt up and actually look at the hocks up in the middle of that tree you should see it there. And you know, people usually put a lot of skirt on a dog either to give you more length or to um, to hide the hind quarter. Um, so um, yeah, just just pick the skirt up and just feel free to just have a look exactly where the hocks is. And they should be parallel. thing enough nowadays, I think some of the Lazas have better Shih Tzu tails than they have Lazar tails, and I think half the Shih Tzu people would love to have some of the Lazar tails. But we have a very high set tail, carried over the back, but not like a pot hook. There is often a kink at the end, and they're well feathered. Um, it's the important part is to set of the tail because we want to tie like I said so that you actually get a, a good bit of plum behind the tail. So um, I think that the issue that we have is that too many it's the slope of the fruit, they all come down too far down underneath. But it's also again hidden by like hair. So when you're examining a large little table, you need to run your hand from the window right down to the base of the tail to see where that is because you should be able to feel that it should face being a blunt stop before the tail comes up. You don't want to be able to move your hands and slope it down on the, on the throat. Puppies can tend to carry their tails um, a fraction high because it just has to wait till the actual adult coat gives it enough strength to drop the coat. So sometimes to give a nice, uh, to get a good finish, you have to get the puppies, you're better off having a little bit of higher um, carry to the tail um, because you end up with a better, better shaped tail um, once the furnishings are <coughs> actually from the, from the off. So unlike more recent standards, the original riders of our standard chose not to describe basic elements of structure and movement <coughs> to say free and jaunty. So what is jaunty? What makes up jaunty? Um, you know, I, I think this picture actually describes it really quite well. We, we don't want to see the Lazar Rapso going around the ring with its head down and going at 100 mile an hour. So the head the carriage should be up and it gives uh, the jauntiness of it. It's, it is very hard to describe the word jaunty, but when you actually see it, it happens. Too many Lhasa people take the dogs far too fast, and I'm important for that too. Well, for the all rounder people especially, because they like to <coughs> see a dog just take off and belt it around the room. Yeah, yeah Michael, um, correct me if I'm wrong. In the last half, so compared to the Shih Tzu, the Shih Tzu moves flat and, and straight, yeah. flat. Well, the last has a sort of... It has sort of a, that's the, the bounce or the jaunty in its Yes. So correct. when they run the too fast, it sort of, you know, it's like a... a it does, that's exactly correct. And the rear... I was getting to that. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> in the last on the side gate, it's not like a shih tzu that you want it to flat. You want a sort of a bound to... Correct. To, correct. Right? The jaunty. That's the one. Yeah. So this, you need to have, because we do tend to get a lot of lines that are, that are too square. So you do need to have that little bit of length to give you um, the correct free flowing gun. Now there's so much controversy over the lines are actually high action. The important thing is, it is, again, very similar to a chihuahua, you want the front extension and you want to be able to see the rear pad. Now with a Shih Tzu, the pad actually kicks up, right? So people talk about Lars and kick up. Um, that's usually because they're, they're too angulated and they're actually, they do kick up. But 
you know, some of the old time people that uh, talk about Lars and Ruben, they say you should never see any pad. Well, that's a load. Why, um, why, why, why should you see any pad? I mean, that's, that was their excuse because they they said, um, you know, to give the jauntiness, they, they like they stilted. And I go, well, the breed doesn't ask for stilted, stilted game. So if you were, if you can imagine the dogs of Tibet originally, um, they were tougher than dogs and they weren't as angulated as the dogs we have today. So yes, you should see pad um, if they're driving correctly, but you don't get the distinctive key card. Which some of the shits who I to say the weekend didn't have. So you, you want to see uh, the, the reach and the drive without the kick up. So you just actually just see the pad and then it moves forward. It's virtually very similar to a drive. Okay. So the legs <coughs> move parallel coming and going with a tendency to converge as the dog increases its speed. Pretty, pretty standard. So. <coughs> uh, so, so, as I was just saying, you should see pad um, as the dog moves, moves, goes forward without any excess. Okay, so the coat of the larger Rapsu is a double coat. It has a top heavy straight coat should be hard, not woolly or silky, and it would length. Now, the standard says hard. Most people interpret hard as harsh, and it is not a harsh coat. It is a hard coat. So it should feel like human hair. So the lady just there with the, the straightened, <laughs> straight, straight hair, that's exactly what it should look like and feel like. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the Laza has um, a very different coat to the Jitsu. The, the Laza's um, undercoat is actually attached to the follicle of the hair, whereas the Shih Tzu, the undercoat is more attached, detached from, from the follicle of the hair. The, the Laza coat is much easier to look after than the Shih Tzu coat. Much, much easier. But remember, you don't want coarse, harsh, they shouldn't feel like that. Uh, and you know, we we see it a lot because people think, oh, if they interpret hard as even some of the breeders interpret hard as being harsh, but it's not hard. There, it's it is a hard coat, which which is really like the strength of the coat, not the coarseness of the coat. Oh, okay. So we don't mature as quick as a Shih Tzu matures. So. Uh, probably anything from 18 months to two years, depending on how they look after it. The issue with last is this, that we go through three coat changes. We have a puppy coat, we have the nightmare junior coat, because at about um, anything between 12 and 18 months, they drop all their undercoat. And this is the time that you have to be extremely careful when you're looking after the breed because, yeah and then they change again, so they go to an intermediate coat and then to an adult coat. So the change is, but an adult coat, a dog in full adult coat with correct hair, you can leave two weeks for that, but it's just beautiful. Uh, but if you have incorrect coat, then it's a nightmare. But the, the actual puppy the junior coat change is, um, it is a real nightmare for the after because you, like you just, the undercoat just comes away from, from the skin about, uh, Mornings from mornings, so people <laughs> don't realise that, and they start you know, using slippers and stuff, and they actually snap the actual main bolt or hair. So they will go, oh, it's done. It's had another so drop, but it's all lost all its hair. But that's usually because people are. You, you have to just be so careful taking the other thing out of that age. Texture of a puppy or a junior coat gets much softer. Much softer. Much softer. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I, well, I don't, you know, you don't actually really get the beautiful hair until they're four, five, six. This breed, we can show until they're 
15, I won a uh, my 11th specialty with uh, a bitch and she was 11 years old. So they, they have really long liberty this week because they don't suffer from anything very much. They don't suffer really well. <laughs> so yeah, we're a much slower maturing dog than the Shih Tzu. A Shih Tzu puppy, I mean, you can win best in group for the Shih Tzu puppy because they look full and their coats are really on the ground. The larger coat doesn't really touch the ground much before 18 months of age. No matter how big the puppy is. Right? So we really actually don't have a lot of colours, but it covers virtually every colour. <laughs> except green. <coughs> uh, except uh, it's not green, except uh, liver. So gold, sandy, coloured, <coughs> dark grizzle, slate, smoke, party colour, black and white, or brown. Well, I find the, the whole issue over brown is the same as the issue over chocolate, and the nose must be black. I've never really ever seen a brown vase. I have seen I have seen chocolate the liver vases, but I have never seen a brown vase that's had that's had black leaves. So all colours are equal, um, and may possess dark tips on the ears and the beard. Um, the, the original standard um, of the vase used to say golden to be preferred. Thankfully, they took that out. So we do, as you can see, we do have. Good headfalls. We grow, we spend lots of time getting good whiskers and beards, and the tails are well feathered as are the feet. Now, the issue is that what I have is that I don't want to see too much coat. Because as soon as I see these dogs that have just grown heaps of hair, I worry because the dog's whole balance and shape I mean, it's taken away from it. So, Basically, as far as I'm concerned, I like um, a larger to be trimmed pretty much at the level with the table. So once it's on grass, which we show in Australia on grass which all the time, yes, it, it will curl up, but it still give, it still, the dog still holds its shape. I think some people just get too carried away with having too much hair, too big a whisker. I mean, you know, whiskers are beautiful, but, um, you know. <coughs> So this is the other pink owner contention. <laughs> so this is where I was saying, that is the exact same dog, one on, one on grass and one on the flat surface. In the same, they're taken the same day. So you can see that the balance does look very different. I'm not saying that's a problem, but uh, the balance looks very different. So you have to really understand when you're judging. If you want to look at your balance, sometimes you need to look at the balance on the table. Sorry, Al, we can talk about size. Yeah. Okay, some of the lines are getting far, far too big. Yes. Far, far too big. And the other issue is that people then go to the other extreme and put up dogs that just have no legs and no long and low. And I hate long and low. So, look, as far as I'm concerned, I could take a dog anything from 10 to probably 11. No more. No, seriously, I um, went across to the American Lions Grassroots Show about four years ago and looked at all the dogs and I went, I can't take a single one of these dogs home. They were all far, far too big. Um, but all of a sudden they're starting to change, so that's quite a mess. I think they're real. <coughs> so we don't actually have any, any faults listed. It's a very basic, typical thing to So I just... <coughs> I initially I wasn't sure how many people were here or what was going to be here. I was actually going to put these dogs up to actually just show dogs that you know that I've appreciated over the years, um, and I was actually going to get people to protect them, and I thought we're not going to have time for that sort of stuff. So you know, these are these are dogs that um, I think have really lovely balance. As I said, this dog probably I mean like, he was just an optical show dog, but. Um, and you can see how beautiful that hair is, and that, that's an eight-year-old dog, just absolutely magnificent, yeah, magnificent um, 
adult code. This is a young puppy code. She was probably two in that photo of the station. This dog down here is actually the current one I'm actually showing. You know, that they can be extremely attractive and very pretty to look at. So, I mean, I have a, I have a, um, a leaning towards black and white party colours since I just sit down and study that so many people wouldn't show a party colour they go, oh, can I have shit so <laughs> But I, I do, but you know, the party colours are extremely important to look after to keep white and keep white. Um, it is very different because the white, the white hair and the colour hair is totally different. So, and there are, you know, to look after them to get the code is, it is very well work. So there's some dogs that I think just had really, really lovely heads. Um, and you can see that they're looking straight forward. And they've got good, it's in, you know, again for me, it's the good strength of muscle. We don't want them too fine and narrow. You can see that they're, or you can see that they're masculine, um, and you will you will pick up the, the features as being quite general. <coughs> we do see a lot of down yeah. Yes, they're awful. And see, I have a tendency to prefer something. I I, I prefer something that is actually shorter and four face than, than the dogs that are too long and four face because usually the dogs that are long and four face have no strength for four face. Unfortunately, I think with the way the world is happening now. I, I believe that the Lars's muzzle will eventually be asked to be long to give um, supposedly health reasons for it. They don't suffer from the lack of breathing or anything like that, but I, I feel that that's the, t the tendency that's going to happen. They're going to actually ask us for a longer portfolio, which I think will just lose the whole balance of the Lars's part. Um, so I prefer something dead on I don't like anything over that person. Which that you prefer is that one that is a very strong but that one not. Oh the two down here? Um, I, this dog is a it's a fraction long for me. Uh, this dog I like him, he's a little bit extreme, but he's a little bit too short. Yeah. So you mean that the happy medium would be both an extreme you mean also by then? Yes, but it's very high with as well. But would that still be a very natural glass? Uh, I think this dog is absolutely beautiful in the flesh. It's a it's a it's So these two are, are American dogs. Uh, this dog, I, I I love the head expression on the left hand of this dog. I think it's just absolutely Beautiful. This dog has this, has a very nice expression, a really and it's a very stale goal. Um, but my criticism of this dog he doesn't have enough strength to muzzle. So he will look, he will walk, he look, walked into the ring and he was um, a very spectacular dog. But you know, in in all fairness, as a breeder, he doesn't have the width, and of course, when they don't have the width, the teeth are narrow. Which is the other thing I've got to tell you. Please make sure you count. Because we are finding that people that are showing dogs with five and as low as four. So people just have a good look, they don't actually have to be able to build the inside. Yes, definitely. And talking about cheese and diet, would you accept this as a young No. Not in the show ring. Not in the show ring, but as I've talked about it over the weekend, as a breeder, I always keep the sister bike. It's just, it's just to bring the over under shot back in again. You know, males can change in one generation. It's not so so level, level would be acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. But see, but the thing is, you know, level, level um, and scissor, you have no, you have no chin. You know, you can tell instantly. It just, it's, it's more as the entire expression of the last one. So no, I don't normally accept get away with little, but you know, mm. have, it, the, the dog would have to be beautiful in so many other ways <coughs> that I would actually maybe give it the breeze. <coughs> don't know that I would ever take it any further.
<laughs> so, yes. <laughs> um, I, I put this photo up because I think it just, that's the expression that you should see when a large was going to the so I just think that that's just, both of those two don't have this. Well, that's a bitch at the bottom, that's a little top. I just think that's just a wonderful expression. Okay, so I just put these up just to show, and I think sometimes you even even in these pictures you can sort of see that they're not, that they're sort of jaunty. Um, they're, they're not, um, they don't have the heads down, they're not, they're not going at 100 miles an hour. And you can, and, you know, you can see just that little bit of pad, it's, just, it's coming through, it's not, it's not actually getting that. So, again, we move the, the difference between the shit so and the last half, so, mm -hmm. that shit so drives, yeah, and move. And last half, so, correct, correct. That's the jaunties, and you know, I guess until you actually see it in the ring, uh, it is extremely hard to describe the word jaunty. I was going to get the Oxford Dictionary meaning of it, so I went, But this guy, this, this talks not to everybody, it doesn't give the people who really haven't judged that as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a last set that moves like a shit, so it's totally wrong. Totally wrong. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So I've heard judges who judge that and say, oh, it's too bouncy. But actually, that's, that's a NASA. That's that's exactly right. That's Especially if they, as long as they've got a good, strong yeah. top on, um, you know, the bounce on dogs usually, um, if they've got too much bounce, it's usually because they don't have a good top line in there. Yeah, it's just quality, it's, it's not even... It's not Maybe even. it comes from the Georgia cars, yeah. going through, going over the cobble stones, and then you bounce the spring. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, Lazarapto is a seldom a pet. They're much more of a companion. They're the most amazing dogs to have um, in the house. Sorry? Next to four. And I seriously they are really that can be really the cloud in the house <coughs> the bottoms. And um, but they're never stupid. Trust me, they are never ever stupid. They are they are very, very intelligent really. Yeah.
in. I tend to actually to give shape to my dog. I can use the little whiskers here to, to, to level it out. I'm so careful not to take that dog off the ground. And I've had um, people bring the dog into me and they took it around by the tail and I just said, do you want to do that again? Yeah. Not ever again. Because it's going to, if people do that, they're going to spoil our sport because uh, animal welfare league people will stop the fish on the box. Yeah, but, but you're right. The properly groomed lasses or shih tzus will have enough beard for you to Absolutely. Although yeah. even put it down without any pain, I guess. But it's also the way you do it. It's not like this. It's just yeah. where you go over it. Yeah. Just, just yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. see it happening. Yeah. 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 Not, yeah. not yeah. all the way down. Just yeah. to lower the thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just use, you know, your thumb and fingers. Yeah. If that works, you can just use your thumb and finger and just use the other hand. Exactly. Let's do that, Thank you. But yeah, it's, so seriously, for judges, if you see somebody <coughs> picking the dog up from the tail and the lead. Now, now also, yes, yeah, it grows. Yeah, it's a real thing. Yeah. 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 And for me, yeah. 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 two weeks' time, we have the judges to the instruction, and it's one of the first instructions we get on. Yeah, but yeah. 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 it's not We are used to it, but it's not normal. Exactly right. Because then the way you feel it all. The terriers are used to it. Ronnie said, right, even though we don't know this case, because we are so used to it. Yes. But it's totally wrong, and then it's too no, long. It's it's we should stop and uh, say, and 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 like a cave, so I, a window. I yes, I, I do the window because you know they go around the ring. Yeah, you know, yes, they can see that. But if you have a really heavy head fall, you know I don't believe that the lost one says that. I think that's half the reason when you approach a laser, you make sure that they see you because they are chari of, of people. So what I do to make sure that they see the judge is I um, I glue the head back the night before and. Um, when you brush it out, it actually creates the arch by the eyes. Another question, Michael. Okay, as a judge, how do you approach a Sasha and how would you go through? What are the things you do? What are the motions you go through? I think the most important thing. Okay. First, when you approach. Okay, when, you approach, okay, so when, when I'm judging okay. a lighter so I, 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 when it comes in the ring, it's put on the table. I walk back on the table mm -hmm. and I look at the overall mm -hmm. balance of the dog on the table. That's the first and foremost thing to do. Then I move to the front to make sure that the Lanza sees me. I basically introduce myself to the dog. Then I look at you know the overall shape of the head, check the mouth, feel 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 the skull. Yeah. And then basically come to the side of the dog and I run my hand down the neck to the wither so that I can feel where the wither is. And then I use, luckily for a man, I've got you know, fairly busy decent-sized hand, so I can actually feel the angulation using my fingers, so, so from wither to point of shoulder to, to elbow, and basically I can feel what that angle is, and then I feel where, like, I feel the elbow, then I feel the amount of rib cage we have, so it's important to run your hand right down and feel, to make sure that you've got a good amount of rib cage, strength of loin, then I run my hand down to the tail, feel, flip the tail over, and then basically um, check. Well, I you said that you also feel the, the legs. I feel right down the front of the legs, sorry. Are you all you all, 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 all the way down. Are you no. standing at the front or after you finish the back? From the back. Yeah, from, the from the back. So when basically I run my head, I feel the angulation and then I run the Yes. Yeah, because uh, the, the position of the eyes is totally wrong. It's a little more uh, uh, frontal. Yeah. And they, you see this uh, round eye, and then uh, some last are uh, too short. Too short in the so I think uh, this is uh, not the reason. So it's, as he said, it's very important to look carefully at the head. Yeah. And then the shit you have the last eyes. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is the interesting thing, when we go back to the, uh, the liturgy, I actually 
we had a chance to do this. Look at James and I actually try to step back to acknowledge this is probably the most influential goal in the breed, in the lifetime of breed. It was a dog called an all and Trevor. He came from America, went to England. He totally changed the entire show. Well, he, he gave them all the images, but what actually happened was people were doubling up, tripling up on this dog. Uh, but way back in this pedigree is a dog with no zone, which we, well, I'm convinced is. So again, again, uh, the liver knows it's a disqualification. Absolutely, it has to be called uh, disqualified. Yep. Yep. Michael, the uh, reading is showing last us. It's part of reading. You know, we talk about the body of the It's such a dog. It's such a dog. It's also the art of grooming. Oh, absolutely. How many hours are you spending your dog? I spend probably three hours a day before getting ready, and then I get up in the morning at five o'clock and I. Rushing out again, basically re the coat before I go to the dog show. And so then it's also something we have to think about as judges said, what an exhibitor has to do to prepare a coat of dog in the ring. Yeah. You know, they are they're working on this for five, six hours. So have yeah. respect for <laughs> the dog. Yeah. Don't look at the end scene where you don't need the food, especially uh, for example, yeah. the order. Yeah. Yeah. No. You don't need to do this. Uh, uh, yeah. also, yeah. Yeah. You can touch yeah. about you. Yes. Yes. Use yes. a finger and put in there. Judging in countries where you have critiques, mm -hmm. it's always mm -hmm. also nice to say something about the code presentation because the news is alive because they see you have an eye for the way they present the works. There is a lot of, a lot of work to be done on a large group of code. The other thing I just, just quickly, um, when I fill the coat, yeah. I lift it up and fill the texture through my hands and, and it should basically drop into the same spot. So you can feel this, <coughs> the extracts. Yeah. So you don't want the big and bull. It's heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. It's like it's like this. It should be the same. And here, here you should feel this cold. And it's a bit sick. So you can feel it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So yes, it's, it, and it, but it is very hard. People tend to bypass my workflows. Uh, I, I do find under some, uh, country, uh, uh, certain countries don't get a seat. So they go, oh, what's that? I had an example the other day. A judge um, was about to award me, but he had to go and ask the stewards whether I was a hard knee or a life or something. And he was about to award me. So, you know, I, I guess that's why I was quite happy to come here, uh, because there are not a lot of lives in Asia at all. We are the second cousins in Asia. Um, and so it is very hard to, as a breeder and loser to break through that barrier. So the issue of uh, um, getting through and you know, not ironing, you're going to have to do that. You're going to have to present the dog so that they go, this is it, this is better than any Shih Tzu here, to get recognised. Uh, anyway, we're not that late because we're gonna serve lunch and have the seminar at the same time. Okay. Yes. yes, but we have a short break, seven minutes, ten minutes, and then we go. Okay.